Okay. Hello, everyone is watching this video. This is DJ Dimaliwat, and I'm here for another edition of Motivational Mondays. And um, as we wait for people who to become online, I want to say hi to everyone who's watching this video again. And I'm here to talk about real estate investing. So hello sa mga unang nag in, those who are on time. So as we can see, there's a lot of people logging in today. So it's another edition of Motivational Mondays. And as you all know, every Monday we do this for our subscribers. We do this for you, our TGFI community. So hello, Alan. Hello, Pau. Hello, June from Doha. Ayan, so dumadami na yung ating mga online. Hello, Maria from KSA. And kasabay nito, I'm also online in my Facebook page at DJ Dimaliwat Official. So for those who are also following me in my Facebook page, thank you very much. And also, I, this, this is also a recorded session so that I can also share this in, in some of my... Uh, followers and subscribers as well. So, um, as we continue, can I also request everyone to, and remind everyone to like this video, also to leave comments down below if you have some questions. I know I already mentioned that you can prepare your questions for me and shoot, shoot me up with that. And at the same time, uh, can I ask everyone to share this video? So, if you might just share this video to your timeline. Go ahead and maybe tag your friends who might also be interested in real estate investing. That would be good as well. Uh, you can also get the link of this video and share it to your timeline or post it in a Facebook group uh, or to any group that you have so that people who are also investors, people who also wants to learn more about real estate, um, We'll also learn. So the topic for today is about real estate. The, the reason why I chose this topic is, as you all know, two weeks ago, actually just two weekends ago, no, so Monday pa lang, so about nine days ago, we were in Singapore. And we, what we did is we conducted a seminar for OFWs, particularly for the TGFI community. And we talk about real estate investing. So we cannot really cover everything that we've talked about there because in this session, because it's about three hours, no? Sa dami rin ng questions, it took us three hours to do that. Pero my goal is to do this siguro in different parts. Right? So this could be the first part. And if we still, if we lack time to discuss other things, which I believe will happen, I will create more... Uh, parts, the part two of this. No, so, abangan nyo yon. So, hello, Richard from SG. Hello there. Hello again to, to my friends from SG. Uh, happy Vargas. Hello po, advice for real estate. Nice. That's very good. And so, also this topic is something that I also discussed in the TGFI Financial Literacy Summit that we had in the Philippines here in SMX MOA in, back in April 1 and 2. So this is the, the most basic topic that I would like to cover because I believe that most of you, or since you're watching this, all of you are really interested in investing in real estate. So sabi ni Mike Ignacio, condo rental tips. Sige, daanan natin yan, Mike. And so condo rental tips, that's very good. So continue, go ahead and just continue to, to leave comments so that I can also answer your questions. All right, hello, Dan Wayne. From HK, you know, there in Hong Kong, that's very good. We also have a big OFW community there. I hope to meet all of you soon. Pag nagpunta naman ako ng Hong Kong. Yan. And, and hello there dun so, sa mga nanonood din sa, sa, ng live sa aking Facebook page. Yan. Thank you, Gladys, for sharing my video. I appreciate it. Hello, Rodel. Hello, Will, for watching. Thank you very much. For everyone who has, has been sharing the video as well. 
And hello, Ma Ma Maria DC and everyone who shared the video. That's very good. Um, yeah, we're welcome, Mike. So, okay, um, let's talk about real estate investing. No? So, when we talk about real estate investing, bakit ba yun yung very important topic niya? And bakit most people, why do most people really want to invest in real estate? The most important thing is that, uh, again, in, in real estate, it's really tangible. But everyone, I think, it's not just a Filipino dream. It's even an American dream. It's even an Australian dream. It's even a Singaporean dream to own your own real estate property, a property that you can call your own, diba? So, meaning, it's everyone's dream to have their own property. Because wala namang talagang taong nabubuhay ng maigi ng walang sariling bahay or there's, hindi naman sarili, but what I mean is, there's no roof in their heads, diba? Dapat merong, um, merong, yun nga, merong uh, nagko-cover sa'yo, di ba? May shelter. That's what we call shelter, di ba? At the very least, shelter to protect us from cold, from warmth, ganyan. Hello, Rodel. Hello, John. Hello for, thank you for commenting. So, di ba? That's, that's very important. And, um, and at the same time, yun talaga yung nagkikip ng family. So, I would understand why people all over the world want to invest in real estate. And that's probably one of the biggest investments, if not the biggest investment, one can make when we talk about investing. But yung real estate talaga. So, sabi ni Arvin, hello from Qatar, hello there, Ar Arvin. Then Mark, uh, commercial versus residential rent, saan mas maganda? Sige, sagutin natin yan later. Mark, uh, when, we talk, when we talk about it, Sa dulo. So, keep on coming yung mga questions ninyo. Princess, uh, hello from me. Hello there. Okay, so, my first, uh, my fir the first thing that I want to share to you is that first reminder is, I always say this during my real estate seminars, that don't invest in real estate. Don't invest in real estate. Right? So, magugulat kayo bakit ko sinasabi yan even though I'm a real estate business owner. But I would always say that it, if you really want to, uh, if you care for your money, diba? if you give your money importance, then don't invest in real estate. Well, at least not yet. Don't invest in real estate yet. Diba? Wag bigla, bigla. Don't just jump into real estate just because there's an opportunity. Don't jump into real estate because there's just a property for sale. Don't jump into real estate investing just because you have the money. Again, just like any other businesses, it's not just about having the money. It's not just about you have the money and then you can pay. Then you can already start investing. Because I've already seen a lot. Countless people who have their dreams crashed and uh, their finances get affected because they invested in real estate nang nagmamadali. Right? Without thinking about it, without doing the proper due diligence. So, I want to share to you the basics because it's so important. It's so important that you know this. Right? That, so, let me share to you, the again, the first question that you would want to ask yourself when you want to buy a property. Of course, you cannot invest in real estate if you don't really buy. Diba? So, when buying a property, the first question is that First question that you have to ask yourself is this. Will I be buying based on personal use? Gagamitin ko ba to? Sa sarili ko? Ako yung titira? Or will I buy this for investment purposes? Meaning, hindi ako titira. Ang gusto ko lang, kumita yung pera ko dito. Diba? So those are the, the, that's the first question that you should be asking yourself if you want to invest in real estate. So, before you want to invest even though you have money. Don't invest yet. Think of your purpose, why you're doing this. Diba? So, that's the first thing that you want to answer yourself. So, is, would it, will it be for investment or personal use? Now, when you have your answer, now let's, let's see. Bakit? No, bakit? Uh, what are the things that you should consider in terms of buying your own personal property. So let's, take a, let's talk about personal use first. How many of you are watching 
you can leave a comment below. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Who wants to in to buy a property? Na ikaw yung gagamit for personal use mo. So maybe you're you're too you're too tired of renting and paying your you're paying other people, paying your landlord, paying your landlady for rent, and you you might be thinking, sana yung binabayad ko na pera para sa akin na siya, de ba? So sana kumbaga maipon ko na lang siya for myself. As, as you can also know that real estate is already is actually a forced savings, de ba? When you buy a property, na ba forced ka magsave? You're just saving your money there, and then nakatira ka pa sa property mo, de ba? So makakatira ka ba sa bank? If you're saving your money in the bank, can you live in the bank? Of course not. If you're saving your money in your bed or in your cabinet, can you live in your cabinet? Of course not, right? But if you save your money in real estate, you can live in that piggy bank that we call your own property. So that's really one of the best reasons why you should invest in, in, in buying a property. So, ano yung mga dapat mo consider when you're buying a property? The first thing is, of course, your budget. The basic rule of thumb in investing is that your monthly amortization must be 40% maximum of your monthly income. So example, your monthly income is let's say 10,000 a month. So your amortization should be max at 4,000 a month. So the same thing if your monthly income is 100,000 then your monthly amortization for your personal property should be up to 40,000 maximum, right? If it's an investment, that's a different story. But for personal use, it should be 40,000. So for, that's the first thing. Right? Make sure that you have that budget. The second thing is that only buy in a place that you love. Only buy in a place in which you can defend to your wife. You can defend to your kids, to your spouse, to your parents, that this is a very good property. This is a property where I would really live for a really long time because I love it. I love the community. Not just, you know, when you buy a property, especially for your own personal use, you should not just buy the unit. Buy the community, the amenities because you will be spending some time there. That if, the, the, if, the community, if the property has a pool, if the subdivision, you have to buy the subdivision itself because your family will be walking around that subdivision. Maybe even the community outside the subdivision, you should also be considering that. Um, and even the nearby properties, nearby community, like if, is there a mall? Is there a mall near that place? Are there places where you can also do some recreation? Makapag-enjoy ka ba doon? May mga time ba kayo to really spend during, uh, during weekends? During weekends, what do you do? You don't really spend that much time at home, just at home. You also spend time outside. Are there schools around the community? Diba? So also look at your time frame. Right? Consider when do you plan to move in. If it's a personal property, do you need it immediately because you're tired of renting? Right? Or, hindi ka pa naman nagmamadali, so you can buy a, a pre-development, a pre-selling unit, yung hindi pa nakoconstruct, para mas mura siya, so that you can save money from that. Diba? So, parang while saving, you can, you, you can already buy it at a lower price. Diba? So, you have to know your time frame. Dapat may plano ka. Kung wala kang plano, nagsisayang ka ng pera. Right? So it's very important that you have a plan so that you know if you got to buy a property that's already standing or you want to buy a property that, that will be turned over two years, three years moving forward. So you can buy it cheaper. Right? So that's the, the next thing. The other things that you need to consider is your documents. Um, the reality about real estate investing, buying a property, is that um, talagang kailangan ng dokumento. Eh. You cannot really buy a property without any documents, without any legal documents. You need at least a government-issued valid ID. Right? You need 
proof of income because if you are not paying in cash, if you, you're gonna loan from the bank, if you're going to loan from the bank, then the bank or any financing institution would need a proof of income. How, will you, how are you going to pay your property? So you need that, right? So you need proof of income and of course at the same time, billing addresses. But those are the basic things. Um, don't reserve a unit if you cannot, if you're not sure that you can provide the documents needed. So you should really be, you should really be preparing for that immediately. So bago ka mag-reserve, mag dapat makonsider mo yung documents kung nakompleto mo ba. Kung makukompleto mo ba. Kasi magsasayang ka lang ng pera. You're paying the down payment. Yung pala complicated status. Diba? Hiwalay pala kayo ng asawa mo. Hindi siya makakapirma. Diba? For that case, it's, it's, it would be hard. Diba? Kasi based on the legal process, it's still a conjugal property. It's, a, it's still a communal property that both of you owns the unit that you'll be buying. So, uh, God bless us all po, sabi ni Chris Fur. Thank you, Chris. Um, of course, first thing to do is to buy your own house, kahit maliit, basta masasabi mo sa iyo. And the next to do is, if you can save again, to buy a lot in good location in best purpose, according to Oli Soleb. Yan. Sabi ni Happy Vargas from Doha, I want to buy residential rent purpose. Any comment for Clark? Later, later, uh, sagutin ko siya. No? So, um, tapusin ko lang ito. Happy. The next thing is again, long-term plans. Um, if you're buying for residential purposes, if you are the one who will be using that property, never buy if you don't see that you'll be living in that property in the next five years or in the next 10 years, at least five years. You have to convince yourself that, okay, I'll be living in that property for the next five to 10 years. If not, you know, don't buy it. Because, para saan pa? Diba? Para saan pa? Tapos lilipat-lipat ka rin naman pala. So, might as well, you use that property. Diba? When you buy a house, you will redesign it. You will remodel it. You will invest money to, to, to beautify the home. Diba? Para pagandahin yung, yung loob ng, ng property mo. Uh, Magko-construct ka dyan. Magkakaroon ka ng renovations. Then, hindi ka rin doon titira in titira ka lang in less than five years, sayang. Sayang siya, di ba? So, very important that you should be able to know na talagang sige, dyan ako at least five years. Better than ten years. Better kung longer. My, my kids will be the one, will be studying near the place. Di ba? That's why a lot of buyers will always consider the school. Will always consider the churches near the area. Because that's part of the plan. It's better to plan long term than magsisi tayo. Diba? So that's very important. According to Jun Sakai, how do we deal with developers who always give promises with delay developments? Sige, sagutin ko yan, Jun. Um, unfortunately, there's a... Una muna, there will always be some delays. There will, hindi naman laging perfect. There will always be delays in terms of the... Uh, the, 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 the sorry, the turnover of the property. But if it's taking too long, from if I'm not mistaken, the developers has a two-year window that they can at least finish a property. Siguro sa condominium ito. Uh, without getting sued. Diba? Um, but right now, alam mo, inagawa, hinihikpita na na HLURB yan. So, just to answer, the regulating body for that is HLURB. Right? The regulating body for that is HLURB. So, diba? so that's, that's very important. So, you, you deal with HLURB, June. Diba? So, pwede kang mag-report sa kanila, but of course, um, siguro kung within six months lang, it's still acceptable um, to, to less than a year. Pag more than that, tumapak na ng one year, you start reporting. Diba? Sige, sagutin natin yung mga tanong about personal property muna. No? Sabi ni Happy Vargas, yun nga, I wanna buy residential for rent purpose. Any comment for Clark? I like Clark, especially if the plans of the government will push through. I think tuloy naman ito in terms of the uh, Clark Green City. Diba? I've heard there's Clark Green City there. Um, 
So mahalaga talaga na ano na kumbaga mapag mat, maabangan natin kung ano yung mangyayari doon sa area but I really like Clark the potential of Clark because of the Clark Green City happy. So if we, ang ganda ng plans ng government doon eh ng BCDA doon mas magiging sobrang organized siya ganun. So there's a lot of potential in that area uh, especially kung kung personal property naman you want to buy it for yourself residential um eh, marami ding gusto mag-rent doon sa area na yon. Okay. O sabi ni Kelly, broadcast interrupted. I hope okay na tayo kasi mukhang tuloy naman to. Yan, sa page ko naputol tayo because again, meron tayong uh, konting technical difficulty. Nag-down yung internet connection. Anyway. So sabi ni Ryle Litt, OFW ako may tao na sa akong hinuhulugan ko through pag-ibig for years ko na hilugan wala nakatira kasama ko family ko dito sa abroad please help uh, Ryan anong anong plan mo anong plan mo Ryan ano yung question unang una di ba uh, para renta mo ba yan or gagamitin mo siya for personal property or retirement you have to clarify ano yung purpose mo um, thanks sir sabi ni June up to how much is in rent is taxable um General depende. Uh, kapag registered ka as registered mo siya, unang-una, if you will report it and file your the rent income, isasama mo siya sa total income mo, yung yung employment mo or your business mo, isasama mo siya sa total income. So yun yung matataksan. Kung naman ang nagre-rent sa property mo is a company, tapos pina-file nila yon sa BIR yung yung rent niya sa iyo as expense niya, 5% yung initial na tinatax. Tapos, siyempre, may final withholding tax ka pa sa ITR mo. Ganon. Ayan. So, sige. Tuloy natin. No? Tuloy natin. Keep, in, keep on coming dun sa mga uh, questions ninyo. Again, sorry dun sa mga nanonood na live sa aking page. Naputol yung connection. Buti na lang sa TGFI. Nag-weak connection lang. Again, ganyan talaga pag live, guys. Uh, that's uh, makisama na lang tayo dito sa technical difficulties. Okay. And of course, uh, thanks to Consideris also to have a broker. Um, hindi ko sinasabi yan dahil broker ako, but I believe that brokers would really help people in terms of the, the, the property owners. Kasi especially, brokers will be there, lalo na yung mga hindi naman employed ng developer. Brokers will be there basically forever. No, because wala namang retirement sa pagiging broker, and hindi naman siya employment, na mapafire siya. So, um, kung as much as possible, huwag niyo nang hingian ng komisyon yung broker kasi yun na lang yung, yung, ano, yung kita nila, yung professional fee ng mga brokers, di ba, yung komisyon nila. Hindi naman sila bayad na, kumbaga sa sweldo, wala naman silang sweldo. So, it's very important na, kumbaga, get their service to make sure na mag-guide kayo hanggang makalipat. Kasi alam mo, ako, I always teach and educate our people that the role of the brokers and sellers must be hindi lang hanggang reservation. Dapat hanggang makalipat, makakomplete yung documents, ma-approve yung loan, at makalipat. Kasi by the way, yung commission naman, hindi naman po namin nakukuha hanggang hindi nakaka-loan takeout yung, yung kliyente. Hindi na loan takeout ng bank. Diba? So, it's very important din talaga na ibigay namin yung best service namin kasi hindi rin naman kami kikita. Yun. So, yun ang role ng brokers to guide you along the way to make sure na yung kinuha mo property, if it's a personal property, maka-move in ka doon. Okay. Sabi ni Keja, hello po, may nag-offer sa akin condo, rental daw siya, harap ng college. Is it possible po ba? Nakita ko ng 50k to 30k monthly, yun ang sabi ng agent. Akeja, depende. Uh, Pag-aralan mo kung ano yung rental rate dun sa area, that's number one. Number two, yung diskarte mo. Will it be bed space? Will it be per room? Ilang rooms ba yan? Diba? Paano may mamanage yung property? Paparenta ba siya as bulk? Or yun nga, paparentahan mo siya kada bed space or kada room. So, depende dun. Dapat pag-aralan mo kung paano. Diba? Pag-aralan mo kung ano yung diskarte mo doon. Right, you can rent it out. Pwede mo ipasok sa Airbnb, sabi ni Ju. Yes, dapat yun. Siyempre, siyempre, kailangan mong uh, bantayan pa rin. 
Sabi ni James, Blue Collar Hotel ba, sir, is maganda rin na investment kaysa condo that located sa mga universities? James Blue, I would like to believe parehong maganda. No? Condos in near schools, ang kagandahan niyan, based on history, never bumaba ang prices ng mga properties below the school because kahit crisis, mag-aaral ang mga tao. Diba? So, meron at meron mag-revent. Sa condo hotel naman, ang kagandahan doon, mas hassle-free. Kasi uh, may professional property management na mag-manage mag, ng property. Diba? So, yun naman yun. So, both are good. Depende kung paano mo nga siya papatakbuhin. Uh, tinatanong ko, PLD, di ako nag-vin. Di ko, uh, ano, naka-smart ako dito sa phone ko. Naka-LTE ako. Okay. Uh, sabi ni Kuya, developer won't give us proper documents for pag-ibig applications. Can you please help us with the right process? Um, and depende mo na sa tanong, no? Um, may mga developers talaga na yung essence sabi nila hanggang bank financing lang sila. Pag bank financing lang sila, may another option which is in-house financing. So in-house financing mo muna, as pag naka in-house ka na, tsaka mo nga i-require yung mga documents sa hihingi ni pag-ibig. Kasi pwede mo talaga, karapatan mo yan. Pwede mong ma-demand sa developer yung, yung, yung requirement. Ganon. So, pero yun nga, dapat muna, mag-in-house ka muna. Hindi ka pwedeng, hindi ka pa naka, hindi ka pa bumibili, mabigyan na sa agad sila, nila sa'yo yung title. Hindi pa pwedeng ganon. Yun. So, watching from Dubai, sabi ni Dexter, hello John Dexter. Yes, kung hotel, sabi ni Kedja, how I wish all brokers are like you. Well, Thank you very much. I, how I wish to June, diba? But we're trying our best to educate everyone to to be to really be at the utmost service to our clients. Sabi ni Kelly, broker really helps. Will guide you through the legalities and proper advice plus recommendations. Plus, pero be sure to serve broker wisely. Tama yon, tama yon. So also do your due diligence. Pakiram daman yung ma ige, diba? Uh, yeah, dapat hindi siempre yon. Um, happy just to answer that. Ang mga brokers, walang kota kung broker talaga siya na direct, separated from the developer. Pero kapag yung agent na employed sa developer, yun yung, of course, may kota yun. So, kailangan talaga nilang really sell um, to, to really hit those quotas. Hindi naman masama yung kota kaya as long as they're giving the best service. Yun. So, sige, let's move forward. Uh, by the way, um, for those who are thinking of buying their own property, I wrote down a free report. These are the eight fatal mistakes that property buyers make while buying their first home. So I did the, that free report. I wrote it down. I think it's about 20 to 30 pages short lang. And you can download it in, our, in my website. Just go to um, www.djdimaliwat.com slash property buyer mistakes. So that's djdimaliwat.com slash property buyer mistake. So can I ask everyone to, yung sa mga nakakuha, to please type in the comment below so that others can just click the link. Diba? Um, that's a little favor that I would ask. would like to ask you uh, to help me while doing this. Kasi it, I, can really, I cannot really type, diba? Habang nagsasalita. Ang hirap. Ayan. Sabi ni Andrew Esteban, kukuha pa rin po ba ako ng broker kung may housing lot na for sale na ipapasok ko sa pag-ibig? Um, hindi. Um, depende. Kung yung, kung, there's a lot of ways, no? Unang-una, kung diretso sa developer, usually, yes, may, may, may broker yan. Kung na meron namang binibenta na for sale by owner, tapos may broker siya, syempre, dadaan ka dun sa broker na yon. Kung wala talaga, direct from the developer, pwede pa rin, ay, sorry, direct from the seller. Kunyari, kaibigan mo yung seller, direct ka dun. Nag-usap kayo, walang broker. Pwede ka pa rin mag-employ ng broker to help you transfer the, the title. Kasi, hiwalay po yung bayad nun, ha? kayo yung magbabayad nung kapag transfer of title kasi matrabaho po yan. Ako, personally, I don't really like doing transfer of titles. Oo, sayang sa oras ko. So, yung babayad mo sa akin na 10,000 or 20,000, medyo uh, sayang, yung, sayang yung effort ko doon. Kumbaga, I can earn more in doing other things rather than transferring yung title. So, ako, ayoko nag-transfer ng title kasi magastos din siya sa time. So, kung meron kang kausap na direct sa sa isang seller, ang tanong mo, sino magta-transfer ng property? Siyempre, si buyer na magta-transfer ng property. Kasi si seller, eh, kung hindi ko matransfer sa'yo yan, bahala ka. ba? So, ay, alam mo, you know, I would like to share this. No? I have an agent na he bought a re, uh, an agricultural land 
in Bulacan worth 2 million. So sabi niya sa akin, uh, DJ, paano to? Um, ang tagal bago sa akin i-transfer yung property. Sabi niya ganun. Fully paid na ako more than a year na. So alam mo, ang una ko agad sinabi, i-transfer mo na. Huwag mo na silang hintayin, ikaw yung mag-transfer. Kulitin mo sila with the documents, i-transfer nila, i-transfer mo yung property papunta sa'yo. Kasi pag hindi mo gagawin yan, magkakaproblema ka. No? So every time you buy a property, especially directly to an owner, you should... Um, you should um, you should make sure that you transfer the property. Yeah. So, what can you say about uh, Robert Kiyosaki says, three years from now, economic crisis will hamper businesses, but entrepreneurship will be the best thing to fight economic crisis. Is that applicable now in the wait lang, naputol, in the Philippines? Um, as always, as always, it's really good to have a business, John Ward. Uh, dapat talaga may negosyo ka. No, yun yung sasabihin ko later. No, I will go back to that. But naniniwala ako na um, hindi ko alam kung kailan magkakaroon ng economic crisis. Some would say this 2016. Some would say ngayong 2017. Some would say in the next three years. You'll never know. You should also be prepared. Di ba? So, sige, sasabihin na rin natin na if personal property, walang problema na you buy your own property. But if you Buy real estate for investment. Don't just buy real estate. Nang yun lang ang negosyo mo. I would like to say that. Uh, lalo na kung hindi pa ganun karami yung passive income mo in terms of your real estate property. Which goes me, which brings us to my next topic, which is the things to consider in buying a property when it's an investment property. Diba? So, puntahan na, tapos na tayo sa personal use, puntahan naman natin yung investment. So, first thing, before you invest, make sure that again you have steady cash flow. No, so ito na yon. Connect in connection with John. Um, yung tinanong ni John Ward repotente. Dapat bago ka bumili ng property for investment, hindi yung personal use ah. Even with personal use, kailangan may steady cash flow ka. Make sure that you have another source of income that can purchase, can buy you a real estate property, di ba? Mahirap na umasa sa real estate to give you the income until such time that you built an empire and multiple properties that can really uh, feed you and buy your needs. But until you're not there, you should have a steady cash flow from your job or your business. So that's true. So naniniwala rin ako kay Robert Kisaki that you should also be in business. Ayan, sabi ni Vin, agricultural land is free from worries. Uh, of course, depende. Depende pa rin yan, but yeah, lesser. Lesser yung worries, lalo na kung alam mo kung paano mo siya gagamitin. Uh, malaki yung maging potential income no, sa, sa agriculture. Okay. Next is positive cash flow. Make sure, no, never kang bibili ng property kung may utang-utang ka or yung, yung, yung expenses mo mas malaki sa income mo. So, make sure that uh, you have a good source of income and in that you manage your money well. I, again, I would like to share this that during the Financial Literacy Summit, si Jay Castillo yung nauna sa akin. So Jay was sharing, bago siya nag-start mag-invest and buying three houses in his first year in investing, then naibenta niya yun. Before mangyari yun, ang ginawa niya, boom, minanage niya muna yung pera niya. He made sure that he's getting positive cash flow. He checked saan siya makakapagbawas ng expenses so that yung savings niya doon, malalagay niya into buying properties. So, and as a result, nakabili siya ng tatlong properties na buy and sell niya yun. So, kung gusto mo parang ganun din, you should start managing your cash flow first. Manage your money first before you start really buying properties. Bosi nga naman sa sayo mo sa location ng condo malapit sa MOA, sabi ni Dexter, I like MOA. Ang laki pa ng potential dyan. Tumaas na siya sobra. I think it has grown for almost 100% from... The, when I started, I sold a property Jan, I think 2010, at around 2 million, 2.2, masa less than 2.5, sabi natin 2.4 million. Right now, nasa 4 million na yung one bedroom Jan, di ba? But still, there's a lot more, there's still room for growth. Mari hindi na lang magdoble yung price ng property, but it could grow around 25 to 50% pa, maybe in the next 10 years. Ganun ko nakikita yan, so that's very good. Um, yung 2 million, 49 square meter condo versus 250 um, na square meter duplex versus 10 
thousand square meter na agri land. Yun yung sinasabi ni Vin. Kaya talagang, yun nga, laki ng potential na agri. Again, it's not just about owning the property. It's about knowing what to do with it and how to use it. If there are people na ang alam nila is to rent out a condo, maganda rin yung condo, Vin. If ang alam nila yung agricultural land, then maganda yung agricultural land. If ang alam nila is rental ng house and lot, maganda rin yung house and lot. As long as you know how to do it. A lot of gurus are saying that real estate is really good because you have control. Meaning, ito yung property, binili mo, anong gagawin mo dyan sa, dyan sa property na yan para mapaganda mo yan. Diba? Balik, which, which brings me back to sa mga nauna nagtanong, di ba, na sabi nga niya, uh, condo rental tips, sabi ni Mike Ignacio, Mike, kala mo nakalimutan kita ba? Balikan kita, sige. So, my, the very, the very best tip that I got in terms of condo rentals is that create the MVP or your make your property the MVP or the most valued property. Meaning, it's not just about as an empty space tapos paparentahan mo na kagad siya. That's why ang daming um, ano mo, vacant na condos, ang daming vacant na houses kasi wala silang competitive advantage. So, ano yung competitive advantage mo pag nagparent out ka ng condo? Di ba? That's one way for you to to make sure na ikaw yung pipiliin ng market, hindi yung iba. Be uh, be the most valued property. Tanong naman ni Mark Anthony, yun nga, commercial ba versus residential rent, saan mas maganda? If you can afford commercial, I would think commercial maganda rin. Bakit? Kasi magandang negosyo yung mga, mga business owners. Di ba? The business people would always strive to pay for their rent and spend. Diba? Dahil gusto rin nilang kumita. Kung baga, ang, negosyo, ang negosyo mo, negosyante rin nagbabayad. If it's a residential property, minsan, of course, pababaan. Diba? Talagang hanggat makakatipid sila, yun yung gusto nila. Anyway, ganun din naman sa commercial. But still, the long-term effect maganda. You know, dito here in the Philippines, laki ng potential and yung future pa ng office residence oh, sorry office space rents kasi maraming mga companies yung nga gusto mag wants to do business here in the Philippines and they, they don't really want to buy a property but they just want to rent it out diba kunya rin ikaw tanungin ko na lang no magtatayo ka ng business bago kang negosyante or just you just you know starting your startup company would you buy a property immediately or you just rent first so mas marami yung magre-rent first diba so yun yung gagawin din natin. Mas maganda na, maganda rin yung may commercial property. Hindi ko sinasabi hindi maganda yung re residential, but if you can afford a commercial property, then nakita mo maganda yung location, ba? ang kalaban lang nun, syempre location, then businesses are willing to pay for it. Ayan, so, uh, sabi ni Vin, yan nga, Buy in acres, sell in square feet. Meaning, yun nga, i-convert mo yung, yung agricultural land sa, sa residential. So, just my opinion, sabi ni Dong, ano yun? Hindi ko yata nakita. Can you explain fixing period ng loan? Sabi ni Vlad. Ah, okay. Um, meaning ng fixing period, yun nga, let's say, pag sinabing 5 years fixing period, pero ang loan mo ay 15 years, kung, si, kung nag-loan ka ng 5 years, tapos 7% interest, for the next 5 years, hindi yun magbabago. Pero after 5 years, ika 6th year, magbabago siya another 5 years ulit. So every 5 years, pwede magbago yung interest rate. Kapag 1 year fixing period, di ba, ang dami nag-offer na, let's say, 5.5% interest rate, 1 year fixing period, it means that next year, it could change. Hindi na siya 5.5. Pwede na siya maging 6. Pwede siya maging 6.5. I think there's a law na hanggang 2% lang yung pwedeng i-change. Maximum na itaas. So kung 5.5 gan hanggang 7.5 lang yung pwede niyang itaas in a year or kada pag nag-change siya. So, yun yung fixing period in a nutshell. Welcome, Andrew. Nag-think siya. Sabi ni Kenny Remualdo, Sir DJ, ask ko lang if allowed ba bumili ng property sa direct seller tao, idadaan mo sa pag-ibig. Pwede yan. Tawag dyan retail account. So, pwede yan. How to be a broker abroad po? Turo, um, unang-una, kailangan na talaga magdumaan sa four-year course. Four-year course. Uh, kung gustong maging broker. So, for you to sell online, um, just PM me kasi meron kaming mga international sellers that you can start selling muna online and abroad. 
uh, but not a broker, but a salesperson. Yan. Uh, John Ward, that's why I'm considering agricultural investment with income generating. Yes, bean might be as well in agricultural plantation. Yes, in uh, some livestock with knowledge. Oops, ni ko mabasa. And passion, yeah, yeah, that's good. If you if you have more time and uh, you know have the courage to to do business, mas maganda because you have control. And of course, and eventually you can use that money to buy more properties as well. Right? Um, later, ba sa ko rin yung other questions nyo. Tapusin ko lang to, no? Yung another thing that you should consider in terms of when you're buying a property for investment, which is related to a lot of people who are already suggesting, like Vin and John, um, is about you should make sure you have passive cash flow. This is not a requirement, but this is ideal. That if you have a passive cash flow from your other businesses, like an agricultural land, like a, a business, uh, a business franchise, whatever that you're running, if you have a passive cash flow, then that passive income, kung sobra yan sa kailangan, pangangailangan mo, that could buy more properties for you hanggang sa makaipon ka ng property empire mo that eventually could really work for you even when you're sleeping. Diba? Uh, that's what I did actually. To be honest, ngayon pa lang ako magsisimulang mamili ng mga rental properties with my nine years of experience in real estate for the simple reason that I, I have a personal property, by the way. I bought it three years ago, um, sorry, no, seven years ago, 2010, when I was, uh, when we just started Driven Marketing Group. But what I focused on is I focused on building businesses that can help me earn bigger income, passive incomes, and residual incomes. Because of that, um, because of those income streams, um, I was able to, I'm now confident to buy properties left and right. Right. Sabi ni Rach Bermudez, hello, hello there, Rach, thank you for watching. Uh, again, for everyone who finds value about this, this video, can you please share this with your friends as well. So can you explain paano ka magkapera sa condo unit? Uh, yeah, you know, you rent it out. You rent it out. No, yun, yung, yun yung way talaga sa condo unit. Diba? To, make a pro to make an income sa condo unit, you rent that unit out. Hopefully, hopefully, the monthly income should be equal to or greater than your amortization. So welcome, Vlad. How to know the rental value sa condo? Currently, I just base it on rent. But yeah, dong, dong geeks, that's one way you check comparable properties around the area. That's actually the best way. Kasi at least makita mo kung rent out tong price na to, di yun yung competition mo. You, lumaro ka lang din dun sa price range na yun. And you can, pwede ka lang magtaas ng amount if you can uh, justify that in terms of additional services. No, kung meron kang mga additional ideas or freebies that you can give your tenants. Last question ni Kenny. May nakita akong property at ang tagal na nila nakatenga. Paano ko i-verify kung sino may-ari? So pwede ko ba opera niyo may-ari to, to buy ang yung lot? Uh, you look for the owner, you ask for the copy of title. Then you verify the owner. Sorry, you verify the title to the to the RD or the LRA, no? so Land Re Reform Authority. And so, yun yung mga pwede mong gawin. Hello, Nang Lang, watching from in Qatar. Ramadan days na daw doon. So thank you for always watching our video. Is bro, Vlad, go for entrepreneurship. Yes, tama naman yun, John. So we, we continuously build our income so that to buy real estate. You know, as I always say, real estate, this is my belief. No, this is not cast in stone. Pero ako ito. Real estate is a wealth amplifier. Continue building a business empire and or have a great job, malaki income mo, then invest it in a property, nag amplify yung wealth mo. Unang-una, the una, capital gains, lumalaki yung, property, yung, yung income. Pangalawa, if you have a passive income and you invest it in a property, na tumatako pa rin yung, yung business mo, malaki kita mo doon, and then you have a property was earning rental income. So, ang dami na nag-work for you. Diba? So, that's, that's very powerful. No? That you have two sources of income na. Your, your active business income na hopefully earning passive income with you. And then, at the same time, a rental passive income. Diba? Kasi minsan, yeah, you might be an entrepreneurship, pero kung active income pa rin yan, self-employed ang tawag dyan. Diba? Hopefully, you can create 
your business to be to give you passive income. Sabi ni Jones Pure, I'm watching. Hello Jones, thank you for always watching. Uh, nang nang cooking lunch daw siya. Hello, hello there in Qatar. Ayan. Um, sige, sagutin natin yung mga another questions. Wala pa ba tayo real estate bubble now? June Sakai. Um, just to answer that, there's still around 5 million housing backlog. So malaki pa yung backlog ng Philippines natin. But of, ka, karamihan nasa affordable sector. So, tapos yung luxury sector naman, yung ultra high-end, limited naman yung inventory. So, sila nang sila lang din yung mabili. So, I would not say bubble, pero there's a lot of supply, maybe an oversupply konte sa mid-market. So, unless sobrang galing mo mag-market, sobrang ganda nung, nung property mo, um, mahirapan ka to resell it or to even rent it out. So, yun yung nagiging challenge ngayon sa mid-market. Watching from Melbourne, Australia. Wellmar, hello there. Kelly, what do you think about iparent sa properties in the Valley? What do you foresee on the Valley's development? Malaki yung potential ng the Valley development kasi I see it as the next Makati. Diba? They, they sold yung mga harap as commercial property tapos sa likod mga may commercial din, may mga residential din. So parang, you know, nasa Ayala, diba? Parang ganun yung dating eh. So malaki yung potential ng the Valley might not be immediate, but there's still, there are still people. Uh, there might be in the next 10 years, maging parang Alabang or Makati na yung Novali na yan. Dan, sabi ni Dan, what can you advise? I have a 76 square meter residential vacant lot. Uh, nasaan ka ba? Nandito ka ba sa Pilipinas? What's your plan? Do you have a lot of money? If you have more money, you can build a property or you, you can even use that 70, that vacant lot as a collateral, mag-loan ka, magtayo ka ng property, either tirahan mo, pa-rent out mo, ibenta mo, build and sell mo, pwedeng ganun, Dan. Sabi ni Shider, Eli, kakuha ko lang ng property mula sa isang developer, plan ko mag-business in the future sa property na nakuha ko, thank you. Yeah, pwedeng ganun. Anong klaseng, property, anong klaseng business gagawin mo? Uh, tindahan ba yan? Is it a water station? Ano yung, gusto, ano yung plans mo? Dapat klaro ka. You have a long-term plan. Para rentahan mo ba siya? So make sure that every time you buy a property, you know your exit strategy or how would you earn from that? So, kung hindi siya rental. Oh, sorry, kung hindi siya personal property. Hi, DJ. Pros and cons of investing in crowdfunding and buying foreclosed properties. Sabi ni Diane, ito, pinsan ko to. Um, the pros are, um, of course, hindi na ikaw yung gagawa. Diba? Kung baga parang, I think like si Noli Aleje nga, yung lagi nag-offer dyan abroad sa Singapore, um, sila na yung gagawa, magtatrabaho, mag magahanap ng foreclosed property, remodel, ibibenta, mag you take part of the profit. Actually, si Driven, yung company namin, might be soon this year, will also be launching a crowdfunding investment opportunity. That's why we went to Singapore as well. Um, ang kasami naman, build and sell. So may lote ka, may bibilihin, tatayuan ng bahay. Tapos, i, yun nga, ka-crowdfund natin yun. Kung magkano'y kikitain, uh, you take part of the profit, di ba? Ang, ang cons nun, of course, kung hindi mo kilala yung ni-invest mo, pwede kang takbuhan. That's the number one. Number two, maaring mas mababa yung kitain based on sa ina-expect mo. But then again, kikita-pikita ka, eh, no? Usually naman, yung mga malalaking tao naman, hindi naman nila sisirangin yung pangalan nila just for that. No? So what I've heard, Noli Alia have been, has raised a lot of millions already just dyan sa Singapore for that. ba? So, okay din naman yun. Kung nagkamali lang siya siguro ng, let's say, nagkamali lang siya ng title, ba? Kunyari, uh, yun nabili niya, maling title pala, hindi pala legit na title, ba? Dahil, uh, pero kung foreclose naman yan sa banko, so I think mas legit siya. ba? So, yun lang, kung pagkakamali sa title na mali yung punta ng pera, baka malugi yung investment. But nevertheless, you know, since it's eh, since it's a real property, may titulo yan eh. So at least, covered ka. Mas malaki yung chance na kumita kaysa sa hindi kumita. Yun. Ano magandang business subdivision? Pag-aralan mo kung ano yung, ano, ano yung need doon. Diba usually, tindahan yan, or vigasan, or water station. But you know, meron akong isang agent, bumili siya ng property sa Tansa. Malayo yung location. Pero nakita niya, limited yung... Tricycle. So, ang ginawa niya, nag-tricycle siya. I think may tatlo na silang tricycle ngayon doon na pinaparentahan. Dahil nakita niya yung opportunity. So, tapos parang a few years, bawi niya na. ba? So, depende. You have to do your due diligence. Walang perfect 
best business for that. So again, going back to my topic, if your goal is financial freedom, then tapos hindi mo yung ESBI na pagkakasunod according to Robert Kiyosaki. E-employee, kung nag-start ka as an employee, then eventually you become a self-employed. Nung mag-start ka ng business mo, eventually build a big business empire that can give you passive income. Then that's the time that you can really start investing a lot of money in terms of the real estate investment na rental properties. Ay, yun ang ideal. So, last but not the least, uh, my take here is spend time in starting your own business or start a sales career. Kasi doon ka mas makaka-create talaga ng malaking income. Unless talagang you say you're abroad and then malaki na yung income mo, sobra-sobra talaga sa need mo, then yung sobra na yun, wag mo nang pakagasusin kung saan-saan. I-invest mo siya sa property and then let plan it out kung ano yung gusto mong gawin doon. Paparentahan mo ba? Gusto mo lang bang mag-hoard ng maraming properties so that pag nag-retire ka, pararentahan mo siya. I have an owner or W client na may sampu na siyang properties. Ang target niya, bago siya mag-retire, marami siyang property para pag-uwi niya dito sa Pilipinas, hindi na siya magkatrabaho. Kasi yung mga property na yung pinarerentahan niya. So may sampu na siyang condo rent, condos ngayon na pinaparentahan. Minamanage niya yun while he's abroad. Yung iba doon siya yung nagpaparenta on his, uh, sa sarili niya. Ganon. So, <clears throat> anong ginawa niya? Paano niya nagawa yan? May sarili siyang negosyo. May, nagbibenta rin siya abroad. ba? So, nakatulong yun bukod sa income niya to buy more properties for him. Yun yung ginawa niya. So, according to June Sakai, thanks again for the good answer. Rental rates on our Makati condo went down as well as the co-occupancy rates due to new developments. Rates can't cover the monthly amortization, so I sold it at loss instead of having continuous losses. Um, so, it's sad to, sad to hear that, June. But of course, again, kung nakita mo naman na yun yung makakatulong for your long-term goals, then maybe hindi ka na rin masyado nagsisisi. Uh, well, you're welcome, Matthew, for this content. Sabi ni Jandy, Sir, mas okay di ba kumuha ng mga pre-selling na condo? Siyempre, mga factor to look on is location. Pangalawa, trusted developer. Kasi pag natayo na property, mas mataas yung unit. Yes, Jandy, kung hindi mo naman agad kailangan ng income ngayon. ba? Kung hindi mo naman immediate kailangan yung income, gusto mo lang nagsisave ka ng, ng pera, tama yun. Mas mura mo yun mabibili katulad uh, hanggang pagtayo niya. Yan, kwento ko lang, nabili ko tong property ko na to dito sa, sa Mandaluyong, 2010, 2.1, uh, 2.2 million. Ngayon, if I will be able to sell it, baka nasa 3.3 million to 3.5 around that price range. So, so tumaas na siya. Angelica Maliari, pag po nakabili ng lote sa banko, na-foreclose, paano po yung processing nun? Need ba namin yung dating may-ari? Hindi na, kasi si banko na yung may-ari nun ngayon, na transfer na nila. Can you enlighten us with our ITFs? Where and how to invest? Sabi ni Crichel, wala pang RI, uh, sorry, REIT, REIT ngayon dito sa Philippines. Hindi pa siya acceptable dito sa Philippines, so wala pang REIT. So, yun yung masasagot ko dito. Even abroad, nahirapan din sila. Uh, I think US meron, sa Philippines wala pang REIT. So let's wait kung meron pa talaga nun. Ayun, so um, if you have more questions, you know, just go and like my Facebook page that's DJ Dimaliwat or at DJ Dimaliwat Official. Uh, so just go to facebook.com slash DJ Dimaliwat Official. That's DJ D-I-M-A L-I-U-A-T uh, O-F-F-I-C-I-L C-I-A-L. Yeah, that's, that's the spelling. So, DJ Dimaliwat Official. And uh, if you still don't have a copy of uh, my free ebook, then just go to my website. That's djdimaliwat.com slash six habits free. That's djdimaliwat.com slash six habits free. Can I, ask, can I ask someone to please key in those links down below in this comment section para dun sa mga ibang nanonood can also just click that link. So the, the, the copy of, the title of the book is The Six Habits of Young Millionaires. Uh, some of the habits that you can uh, practice in your life to live a better life and to change your life for good. Um, may pahabol na tanong si John, how about network marketing business? You know, I'm not in the network marketing business right now, but I believe in network marketing for the simple reason that again, there's, there's leverage, income, you, you, you can build, you just need to increase your leadership and you can build a team. 
and then you help more people to earn and then you earn uh, with their efforts as well so it's a win-win uh, hopefully maganda yung company maganda yung products because that income can also fuel you to help to help you buy more properties in the future lastly yung properties na hinulugan ko sa Villa San Mateo uh, gusto ko sana bitawan na um real depende no kung may buyer and ayaw mo na talaga pwede naman kung gusto mo naman parentahan why not parentahan mo na lang siya again depende lagi sa goal no so um we're, we're done here with uh, with this for those who have questions just shoot me a pm in my facebook page uh wag po dito sa tgfi page because i cannot really answer i don't answer the the messages here so just pm me in my facebook page and see you again two weeks from now i'll be in japan by then that's june 19th i don't know how will how i will do it but i will make sure that i will be there um so yes god bless to everyone mga kababayan. be successful everyone uh and you know at the end of the day start doing businesses no pagsabay natin pareho magnegosyo tayo at maginvest tayo together and and you know when we have investments and businesses that we can share uh, don't I would always share it here in this video. So just follow me in my Facebook, in my Instagram. That's uh, DJ Dimaliwat86. And also just, you know, uh, download my free ebook so that you'll be part of my email subscription list. So that once in a while, when, I, when there's opportunities that I would like to share as well, then you make sure na nandudun tayo. Kumbaga, ma receive nyo yung email ko. Ma update kayo. Yan. So, oy, Kent, June 19 yon kasi Monday, yung Motivational Mondays. Pero yung uh, with the OFWs, that's June 18, of course. Yung, yung live ko doon. But for the Motivational Mondays, I will be live again in my Facebook page and in, in the TGFI fan page on uh, by 7 o'clock. Hopefully, I can be online by 7 o'clock by then. So again, uh, mabuhay tayong lahat. God bless you all.